Okay, just wait for the and go a little bit left in. Okay, that's great. Keep pushing. Push, push, push. Come big girl. Let's push at the back. Between the track, in the middle. Nice line up in there. the middle. Yeah. Just go there slowly. Go around the front of the road. Let's push it. I want guys on the side to pull, eh? Take the rope, take the rope, take the rope! The story of rhinos can almost be predicted. Coming off a base of about a million rhinos about a hundred years ago. Now we've got 20,000 odd white rhinos, 4,000 black rhinos, three northern white rhinos. You can see where this is going. I'm Derek Chabert and uh, started this uh, Rhinos Without Borders project and? And there's a lot more to you than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Beverly Chabert, um, a National Geographic explorer and resident, filmmaker and photographer and Derek is. All right, let's start this yes. again. Okay. <laughs> truly passionate about the African wilderness and protecting the African wilderness. So we started off more into the science, studying lions and the interaction with hyenas. And 20 years ago, we did a film called Eternal Enemies. And surprisingly, it became a cult film. It was all at night time. We had to do nocturnal work for close to 15 years. These, these buffalo horns, you know. We call it a boss. And it's got shock absorbing features in it, so it stops the brain from getting the jolt. Because uh, the bulls smash into each other with their armored plating. Oh, this is spectacular. Got the whole herd and all the egrets flying. Our very first trip to Botswana was a true adventure. We were very nomadic at that time, and we were just kept from one um, island to the next. We felt like our spirits were free. And just being enthralled with the pristineness of it. that feeling of, wow. We felt that it was true wilderness. Our careers and lives have evolved in a way that it was never planned. We never ever knew that we were gonna end up being filmmakers at all. It's great reflection out there, look at that. And I think coming up to Botswana, said to us that we've got to be part of it somehow, part of that story. But we had to go to our lowest point. And I think our lowest point was when we were confronted with the amount of poaching that we were seeing. Just racks of meat and mounds of leopard skins and skulls of lions. And we, we were horrified. We didn't realize that it could go to that extent. And so we realized that we had to do something beyond just making films. And the only way that you really save these big iconic species is to protect the land that they roam on. And uh, so we started this uh, Rhinos Without Borders project. And what we're doing here is moving 100 rhinos out of the highest poaching areas in South Africa and move them to the lowest poaching areas, which are in Botswana, over the next 18 months. Quite a lot of this started when we were driving up a cut line through the bush here, and uh, we heard some gunshots. 
and discovered the last black rhino in Botswana having been shot. So there's this, this pillar of, of, of Africa, cut down and hacked up. And that makes us angry. Two months ago, we got a call. An owner in South Africa said to us, if you're gonna move these rhinos, I've got 15, but you have to move them immediately. Because the poachers are here now and they're shooting them. And they had shot four of the rhinos the night before, and they were gonna come back that next night, and they were gonna shoot the rest. Many of them were wounded. We found one rhino that had 11 gunshots in him. So we just went through the process almost as an emergency intervention and started moving these rhinos out. Okay, let's do it. Somewhere further down to the east, east direction following the animal. Derek uh, is heading down straight to the east. This is our animal. Yeah, she's down. That's perfect shot, eh? You need something for cover the ears? Yeah, we don't have any. Okay. So Rana's in their present form. We know her about 10 million years old. She's a beautiful female. Oh, yeah. Prior to that, they were these giant hogs that uh, roamed up down through Africa. The rhino family has walked the earth for nearly 50 million years. Among them were the other large mega herbivores keystone species that have the capacity to really be architects of the environment. So we believe that there, there's some fundamentals about the, the health of Africa. The blood pressure is good. It is a good. Nicely. It's like this giant jigsaw puzzle. And if we protect lions and elephants and rhinos, everything works in Africa. 
Without the rhinos, the system starts unraveling and everything stops working. And eventually, you have so much of it collapsing. It sort of implodes in on itself. You'd no longer have that true wilderness. So they're going to wake her. We're going to push her up. Okay, let's get some manpower here. Okay, guys, are you ready? Yeah, one, three. Go back. One, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three. Up, guys. Up, up, up. Roll it up, guys. Roll it up. Roll it up. Hold the hole. Watch for the hole. Let's walk here. Support Come for me straight like this. Okay. <laughs> Come on that side. Go, go down the middle, Maniki. Yes, okay. Okay. Check your fingers here on the side. Okay. Just leave it all on. Carry on, carry on. Just go there slowly. You go around the front to the road. Take that out, take that out, take that out. Watch out, watch out, yeah. One, two, go. The thing about it is none of these animals ask for us to do this. It's quite a lot of suffering, quite a lot of hardship. And they don't understand that we're doing it for the right reason. You heard the news yesterday? No. No, we haven't. What's that? Oh, you didn't hear the... No, we haven't been on... Oh, the, the one in San Diego passed away. Oh, wow. my gosh. Huh. What a time. So there's yeah. literally only three left yeah. in the whole yeah. world now. Nola, a 41-year-old northern white rhino, died at the San Diego Zoo Sunday morning. She leaves behind a dying breed. There are only three more northern white rhinos left in the world. It's believed that poachers, eager to get their hands on the animal's horns... Uh, you know, we wouldn't be doing any of this if it wasn't for this ridiculous myth that rhino horn actually has some sort of medical value. People are using it in Vietnam, in Thailand, in China because they, they think that it actually has some sort of value. It has no value whatsoever. It's almost like fingernails and hair compressed together very, very tightly. Fifteen years ago, the value of rhino horn was something like $32 a kilogram. Today, it's $108,000 a kilogram. Gold is about $30,000 a kilogram now, so it's three times the value of gold. Rhino horn is within the, the top 10 most precious items in the world. It doesn't solve anything, it doesn't cure cancer, it doesn't cure asthma, it doesn't increase libido, it does absolutely nothing. Unless we get in behind it, we will lose all rhinos within our lifetimes, possibly within the next 10 or 15 years. It's got so bad now that poachers are even killing baby rhinos because they can get ten, fifteen thousand dollars out of that. We've lost the Javan rhino within the last 18 months, uh, Sumatran rhino, and now, of course, the northern white rhino is, uh, is there as a, as a glowing example of how bad it can get. We're on the Old Pejitah Conservancy, which is home to the last three northern white rhino in the world. You know, the life expectancy of a rhino in the wild is about 40. Uh, Sudan is 42. He's going to go eventually, and we all know that. And then there will be no male left. He's the last male standing. I'm known Sudan since the year 2009 to now. It's about uh, seven years now. He's my closest friend, and he's my favorite rhino. Sudan. 
Saudara Sila been wrapped behind ears under the belly ya yeah. My name is Zakaria, Zakaria Mutai. I'm head keeper of the Northern White Rhinos. I just uh, want to do as much as I can so that we have more rhinos for future generations. Because most of the time we spend time together, so I'm not a human anymore, I'm just a rhino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If we can lose such a big animal, you know, imagine all the other species that are disappearing every day and that nobody cares about. As a species, human beings, we need to wake up and start taking care of what's left on the planet. So, this is our orphan southern white rhino. Can we come in? Hi! He was abandoned by his mother. He had a congenital condition when he was born. And she abandoned him. And our rangers found him and brought him in. And he was really sick when they found him. So these guys are like his mama now. They sleep with him. Zachary sleeps with him. Sometimes Esagon sleeps with him. Oh, let's go for a walk. Let's go for a walk. Come on, my boy. Yeah. 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 We're going to hand rear him until he's about two, and then we're going to try and reintroduce him. And uh, yeah, and then he's doing really well now. He's coming for you. <laughs> The fate of all rhinos now really rests in our hands. We're the last generation with the power to either save the species or to step back and let it disappear. What help do you need? One, two, three, push! They're going to need to get them out. Yeah. front in a vehicle so depending on where that's going to go it's possible that he's going to come out and charge uh -huh. um, and obviously if he comes out we don't want anybody um, in, in line of yeah. sight you need to get to safety if you can get on but also at the same time we definitely don't want um, him to be antagonized which direction like Feel the heat now. Yeah, just got to get him out here. 
Are you guys ready to do it? Yeah, let's go. Come on, Roba. Come, big boy. It's coming. Okay, everybody behind the crate. Stay still. I'm right behind you. Very well, big boy. I hope you have a safe journey. And we meet each other again in the future. One looks back at your life and it's made up of, of these turning points. I guess that we're all uh, the sum of the journey that we've taken and the changes that we've made. Maybe we can create a story of good hope. You know, that might trigger something, trigger you to, to make a change. We have to protect the animals that we have right now. We have the capacity to push this tipping point. If we can get the global population to be part of this, I believe we can turn this around. That there is immense hope. This is all about repairing the damage that we've done. And understanding that we're not apart from this. We're very much a part of it.